Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today we've got a retro review with Iron Man and Call My Killer Modoc. This is by somebody, William Rossler, and it is from Pocket. It is Pocket Novel number six from Marvel. The Marvel Novel Series number six. This is back in 1978, I believe. 79, excuse me. And I absolutely love, love, love this cover. That is my favorite version of the Iron Man armor, and I love it. So, in this book, um, basically, AIM, Advanced ID Mechanics, uh, wants the Iron Man armor. <laughs> they are in financial trouble. Modoc, the mobile organism designed only for killing. Giant head, little body. Uh, Modoc wants to steal either the armor itself or the plans for the armor so he can sell either the plans for the armor or start manufacturing the armor and sell it off to whoever's going to bid on it to uh, put more money in the coffers of advanced ID mechanics. And Iron Man's going to stop him or try. Die trying. All right, so I've read this book before. I read these back when they came out in the 70s. Uh, I have the whole series. They're all different characters. But after reading, if you watched my last review, if I put these up in order, the order that I'm recording, I just finished Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby, which was absolutely amazing. But I really needed to come down off of that book. So I decided to just dump, jump into something simple and fun. And uh, this was it. Just pulled it off the shelf. So, um, starts off bunch of AIM soldiers uh, are going after Tony Stark. He is at a college giving a speech, and the soldiers try to kidnap him. And then we jump to a flashback to his origin. Uh, now, if you've only seen the movies, his actual origin is close, but it takes place in Vietnam. It's during the Vietnam War. Uh, Tony triggers... A booby trap. There's an explosion. He's hurt. He's captured by the bad guys. There's a piece of shrapnel moving towards his heart. Can't be removed. He and another guy create the Iron Man armor because the bad guys wanted to make a weapon, but they secretly make the armor, etc., etc. So we get a flashback to that. Then we come back to the present. We get some more action. There's a few flashbacks. There's that one. There's a flashback to when he meets... Happy Hogan, and there's a flashback telling us Modoc's origin. Uh, but other than that, it's all modern day, 1979. Um, and it's an enjoyable story. I I know Modoc's origin. I know Iron Man's origin. Obviously, I know how he met Happy. I had I used to have almost every single issue of Iron Man, Tales of Suspense, all that stuff. So. Um, all right, I gave this three out of five stars on Goodreads. I might have gone as low as two and a half. Um, so two is, it's okay. Three is I liked it. Now, I did like it, but it is absolutely a product of its time. Um, there is some... I think what would be considered casual racism, simply in that there's a point where Tony Stark uh, announces that he's going to auction off the Iron Man armor. Not his actual suit, but a copy of it without all the armaments. And as people are coming to this auction, the descriptions of the participants these are people from all over the world, are not the most socially acceptable. I mean, they're not, they're not out and out racist. It's just that they're these little one and two word descriptions that are basically stereotypes 
of these different types of people. Um, and then I'm not sure about the origin story because, I mean, it does take place in Vietnam. There's nothing, again, overtly racist about the writing, except maybe the way that the bad guy talks. Um, and then there's lots of casual sexism. <laughs> maybe not a lot. But the biggest one is <laughs> somebody outmaneuvers Iron Man, basically beats him, and it says essentially that Tony is disappointed that he was defeated and especially disappointed because it was by a woman. Which, yeah, does not sound good. And Pepper, Pepper Potts, uh, at this point in time, she's married to Happy Hogan. So at least she's not mooning over Tony Stark. Although in the flashback, when we learn how Tony and Happy met, she is still, she's mooning over the dreamy Mr. Stark. But she is at the point where so she's married to Happy, so her whole thing, I mean, she is Tony Stark's personal assistant, although I think they just call her a secretary. Um, but her big thing outside of work <laughs> is finding a woman for Tony Stark. She doesn't know he's Iron Man at this point, and she's just concerned about it. He just needs a good woman to take care of him. So she keeps trying to set him up, and that's really... It doesn't go down well nowadays. Excuse me. Um, so, all of that being said, it's a it's a fun story. If you just look at the story itself, it's a fun story. I like Modok. He's a crazy character with his giant head and his little tiny body. Um, I am a huge fan of Iron Man, one of my favorite characters of all time. And as I said, I love this cover. I love that armor. If you watched my pull list video, uh, comics pull list that has three weeks worth of comics on it, I just finished paying off an Iron Man statue that's this armor. It's beautiful. I'm looking at it. It's right there. It's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of aim trying to get Tony Stark, or trying to get the armor, or trying to get the plans for the armor. Tony Stark, as Iron Man, trying to stop them. This is the era when he has to wear the entire chest plate. This entire chest plate here. Um, to keep the shrapnel from his heart. He's got to keep it charged. It's got solar panels, but sometimes he runs out of energy. He's got to just plug himself into the wall. Uh, he keeps the rest of the armor in his, his attache case. I loved it. He, he had the chest plate on and basically the underwear part. And in his case, he would pull out the gloves, he'd put them on, hit a button, and the sleeves would like shoot up. And the same with the boots, and they would shoot up, and then he'd pop the helmet on. So good. Uh, but it's, it's that time period. Excuse me. And like I said, this is when Pepper is married to Happy. Happy is... Tony Stark's chauffeur slash bodyguard. He does know that Tony is Iron Man. Uh, so it's 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 a decent... <clears throat> well, let me put it this way. It absolutely captures the comic books of the time. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any huge deviations from what was going on in the comics. I think it's all pretty straightforward. Except, like, the only thing, it was weird. Uh, there's a little moth flying around in here. Um, for some reason, when they're flashing back to his origin story, it says that the very, the original armor that he created in the hut in Vietnam was gold. When it was gray. In the comics, it was gray for a couple of issues. Two or three issues before he decided that was too scary, and he painted it gold. That's the bulky, bullet-headed armor. Um, so I don't know why why it said it was gold here, which is odd. But anyway, uh, this is getting kind of rambly. So uh, if you're an Iron Man fan, 
<clears throat> especially if you're like a huge Iron Man fan, this is something you're going to want to pick up and read. Um, three out of five on Goodreads. Some of the elements do not hold up. Which brings me to my question for this video. Um, so, how much slack are you willing to give, if you're willing to give any, to a book based on the time that it was written and the time it came out? Um, you know, I, I'm absolutely sure when I read this, I would have been 13 when this came out. I didn't even think twice about any of these things. But it's been, what I say, this is almost 1980, so it's been 41, 42 years since this came out. And things have changed. And I've grown, hopefully, matured. Uh, so it's not like I'm going to throw this away. I'm not going to burn this book uh, because of the perhaps casual racism and definite sexism. <laughs> that's in here. Although, now that I think about it, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to cut them any slack. I was going to say it could just be Tony Stark's sexism, but that's not how it feels. It doesn't feel like it's Tony Stark completely, although he was that way back in the day. It just, there's a little bit of it, I think, in the book itself. But again, 1979. So, uh, are you willing to cut something like that slack? Uh, if you're reading something from decades ago and there's casual racism or casual sexism or, and by casual, I mean, it's just there because that was, I hate to say part of the time. That's the way things were. People didn't, this is, vast generalization. People didn't always think about these things. It just, do you cut it some slack? Are you willing to say, hey, it's a product of its time. I don't think it's being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Intentionally hurtful. That's not the term I'm looking for, but it's not, it, it, it's more a matter of ignorance for lack of a better term. You know, are you willing to, to look at it that way and just enjoy it, for, enjoy the story, enjoy the writing, perhaps, and, you know, it's not, if this was written today, that would, it's different. We know better. Although, again, if, oh man, this is complicated. For a little, little comic book novel? If this was written today, but the story still took place in 1979, how do you feel about that? Could they do it? Could you have that casual racism, casual sexism, because it's taking place at that time, even though it was written today? Um, or should that be just left out? It's, it doesn't affect the story in any way. Leaving it out, that is. Um, huh. Man, this could be a heady, a heady discussion we're going to have. Uh, but anyway, so that's my rambling question, I guess. Hopefully you understood what I'm asking. Uh, I actually just saw recently, I think on Twitter it was, people talking about um, reading books that take place let's say, during the time of uh, slavery in America or maybe shortly after slavery in America, and they, even though it's taking place, a story taking place during those times, there are certain words they still don't want to read. Uh, actually, I just read Dust, the third Splatter Western by Chris Miller review should have already gone up and they do use the n-word it is um post-slavery but it's still the 1800s um and so some characters use that word obviously the bad guys but some people on twitter were saying 
it doesn't matter. You don't have to use it. There are other terms. People just don't need to say it. Um, so I, I think, I don't know if that falls into my whole, the question. It just sort of seems to fit into this whole category. I don't know. But like I said, we could have some, there might be some deep discussion going on in this video. Uh, or in the comments anyway. So with all of that being said, uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. Uh, that's all I've got. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.